Hello folks and welcome to my humble abode and this week's review. Now, for the past couple of weeks, few weeks, I can't remember, I've been on a bit of a isolation kick, a bit of an anti-vibration thing. And we're looking at anti-vibration isolation stuff this week from another UK small company called Isoslice. That's the name of the company. That's the name of the product. And the Isoslice, which costs £259, is a decoupling platform, and it's aimed at supporting your turntable. So, basically, this platform sits in between your turntable and your hi-fi shelf. It sits right in the middle, and it supports, and it lowers the noise floor, well, that's the idea, and all that kind of stuff. So, this platform, which sits on legs, offers 10 layers of isolation. Well, that's what the company says, with the aim of improving definition, opening up the mids, improving the soundstage, and all that kind of talk. Well, like I say, that's what the company says. We will see about that. Now, Isoslice is a small company based in High Wycombe in England, and it's run by a chap called Paul Malion. Now, it's a new company. It was formed last year in 2022, as I make this video, and the Isoslice is his and its first product. Malion is a professional musician and composer. Also, he works on the other side of the fence as a recording engineer and a music producer, and that's where his experience lies. In fact, 25 years of it. From that point, he began to build and tweak turntables, and then he kind of wandered into isolation. Now the platform, this isolation platform, the decoupling platform as Paul would have it, features a host of layers, as I say, principally MDF and acoustic foam, and they sort of slot in between each other. But there's also in the center a multi-ply poplar wood section, and you'll see that it's an obvious beige layer there. Now I actually counted nine layers, but maybe the company includes the adjustable steel feet as another layer. After all, the feet do feature neoprene foam. The feet only hit the base layer. Incidentally, the screw thread does not enter the other layers, just that base layer. Now speaking about the feet, they are adjustable and they include a locking nut. So you adjust the height of each foot and then the locking nut secures it into place. To make sure the platform is level, there is a built-in bubble level inserted into the top section of this platform. And that's where you'll also find a very nice engraved company logo. As I say, in use, you place this platform on your shelving unit you adjust your height and your leveling, then you put your turntable on the top of that, and away you go. Now this unit arrives in little modded tweaky variations. I looked at the default general level, and for that general model and the size of it, because the sizes do vary a little bit, you can fit things like Riga turntables, Linz, that kind of thing. Now the one I had weighed six kilograms, spanned 450 by 360 millimeters with a 70 millimeter height. You can add another 100 millimeters with the feet added and 125 millimeters if the feet are fully extended. Now, as I inferred, there are different sized models aimed at different sized owners. For turntables, holding garrods, there's a slightly different sized one for that. Also, if you have a Michelle, say a gyro deck, there's one specifically for that. But the company will make a size for your turntable if you need it. Although, be prepared, as you might expect, to pay a bit more. You might be looking, I don't know, say £350, that kind of price, if you want something a little bit specialized. Also, you might have to pay a bit more if you want a specialized paint finish. If you're looking for something for your own requirements, I would recommend contacting the company direct. I'll put some contacts below. I'll also put contacts below if you want to buy, because you can buy 
direct from the website. They have a little shop. So as I say, look down there in the description, click on that and you can buy to your heart's content. Now for this review, I placed my test turntables upon a high-end Blue Horizon shelving system. The shelving system itself has anti-vibration technologies built within. I brought in some of the competition as well. I brought in, speaking of Blue Horizon, I brought in one of their own platforms called the Sanctum. The reason I did that, it is basically the same source of price as the ISO slice. I also brought in a much more expensive platform from ISO Acoustics, the Delos, which is quite a thick six-footed platform. And when we get to each, I will talk about comparative prices. Any road up, how does the ISO slice actually sound? How does it perform? Well, let's go to the sound quality tests and we will find out. And welcome to one and all to the sound quality tests for the ISO Slice decoupling platform. And I began with jazz vocal. Well, I say jazz vocal, he is a jazz vocalist, but there's probably more soul than jazz in this one. It's a new album by a guy called Ian Shaw. The album is called Greek Street Friday. And it's an album I featured on my recent music alerts video, the new releases video. I'll put a link up yonder. Here, the vocal is dominant, but there's backing of percussion, electric guitar, organ, bass, and piano. Now, to begin, I listened to my system with and without the ISO slice. So I put my turntable directly on the shelving unit, and then I put the ISO slice on the unit, put the turntable on top, and I took a listen to that. So with and without, you might say. Now to repeat, on its own, the Blue Horizon shelving unit had its own anti-vibration systems within. So the ISO slice needed to offer over and above performance enhancements to make an impact. Now I began with a Riga Planner RP3 with its default Elise 2 cartridge. Now without the ISO slice, that is with the RP3 sitting directly on the shelving unit, the music sounded great. There were no obvious issues. It all sounded, well, it all sounded rather lovely as it was. Thing is though, with the ISO slice actually under the RP3, the music actually improved. I didn't hear any problems without it, but with the ISO slice in place, as I say, things got better. That is, the music sounded like it had woken up, as if the earlier rendition by comparison was a little snoozy, a little lax maybe, slightly loose, slovenly even, not really with it, not paying attention. So with the ISO slice in place, music tightened itself up. It was alert, it was on point. The lead vocal of this Ian Shaw LP provided a greater degree of clarity, but also diction seemed sharper now. The vocal was better integrated into the mix as well. Shaw sounded like he was part of the band. Earlier, he seemed a little bit disconnected, standing in front of a sleepy backing band with a gap in between the two. Bass was larger now, grounded for the first time, occupying more of the lower areas of the soundstage. The noise floor was lower, adding reverb to treble and upper mids, while the overall effect added transparency. What do I mean by that? Well, you could hear layers in the music going back into the distance, instruments, backing vocals, they could all be heard in position. So let's bring in some of the competition and let's listen to the Blue Horizon platform, the Sanctum. As I say, generally speaking, give or take a few pounds, it's around the same sort of price. Now, I do like the Sanctum and I gave it a good review on my website. So I'll put a little link below in the description if you want to have a little look. Now, the Sanctum does a good job of adding focus to the upper mids. It positions the stereo image dead center, which is great, but there was slightly less control of the mid-range on the whole when compared to the ISO slice. The ISO slice provides 
superior tonal balance, I would say. The sanctum can sound a little one-dimensional by comparison. The ISO slice had a richer, more three-dimensional response. What about something a bit more expensive? Well, ISO acoustics, the Delos. In terms of price, I think you're looking around 399 so maybe around 140 150 pounds more than the ISO slice. Now for this, I put my more expensive Funk Firm LSD turntable. I put a gold ring 1042 cartridge on that, and I played ELO's A New World Record. So how did the ISO slice compare? Is the more expensive Delos a better performer? Does it warrant the extra 150 or so pounds? Well, in terms of the extra money, that's really your call. But yes, if you want to know the difference in sound, yes, the ISO Acoustics Delos does sound better. But by degrees, I would say, the improvement of the Delos over the ISO slice is there. But I wouldn't say it's startling. It isn't, it's not a chasm. The Delos lowers the noise floor still further, yes. Vocals sit in a larger space. This is true. Cymbal taps offer extra reverb. But the amount of improvement is not massive between the two. It's definitely there. And an audiophile who wants every last ounce of improvement will want to get the Delos. Everyone else, though, who wants a blend of performance and value for money may be better sticking with the ISO slice. And that's basically the review of the ISO slice decoupling platform. So let me bundle all of that up into one lump and we'll do some final thoughts. We'll also have some pros and cons and I'll give you a rating. Now, the ISO slice is a solid design that does the job and does it well, lowering the overall noise floor, tackling vibration, and removing high frequency noise. It shows, well, to me at any rate, that it can add a performance hike even to high end shelving units. As a platform, the ISO slice does a great job, providing a level of sound quality that belies its price point, at least when compared to similarly priced, well regarded platforms like my Blue Horizon Sanctum. The ISO slice also shows that it competes well with more expensive designs. Witness the comparison with the Delos. So the ISO slice gives you a good balance in terms of cost and performance. As such, it offers great value for money. Pros and cons. And in the good section, well, actually, something I didn't mention earlier, this is a compact design. It's not a sprawling platform which takes up the entire shelf. This is relatively compact. Well, the one I saw was relatively compact. You can get bigger ones if you really want to. I did like the adjustable feet, which is rather useful. In addition, of course, I loved the overall sound quality. I was very impressed. I was also impressed with the value for money. There's some good performance levels here. And sure, it's not that cheap, but there are far more expensive platforms out there. Oh, and in terms of tools, I was happy to see the built-in bubble level. On the downside, well, nothing really to speak of, which is why I'm going to give this an award-winning rating. I'm going to give it a groovy congratulations to ISO Slice. And that's your lot. Thank you for staying to the end of this particular video. Thank you also for your support. Now, in terms of supporting my platform, if it's possible, down below, could you click on the like and subscribe buttons, please? It would just help to grow the channel. Also, down there, there are buy links for the ISO Slice. More information on the company if you need it, of course. And my links, there are links to my brand new website. I don't know if you've seen it, but there is a brand new, rather swish, very professional website. It's got all the bells, all the whistles, and I hope you like it. The mobile version of the site in particular is much easier to use now. So please check it out. Also further down, 
are links to my Facebook group, which you're welcome to join, and my Patreon page, and that's where you can find Hi-Fi News, etc. And there's a new one out this week. So check that one out, all your newsy Hi-Fi stuff, plus other bits. It's not just Hi-Fi. I add other bits as well. I'll be back at the end of the week with a music alerts video. You can find out what goodies I've been receiving through the post. Physical music stuff like CDs and vinyl, even books. So, hope to have your company then. Until then, folks, bye-bye for now.